Hey guys, this is APFQ Tech Radio. I'm going to do a quick unboxing of the ASUS GTX 660 graphics card. This is my second one. I'm going to be pairing it up with my second GTX 660 to run it in an SLI. I got a bit of a performance boost for my games. Uh, so just before unboxing, I'm going to go over a quick overview of the card. This is uh, one of NVIDIA's uh, mid-range cards. It's based off of the GK106 GPU, which is a brand new GPU from NVIDIA. Um, it's in terms of like its competitors, uh, it's closer to probably the AMD Radeon uh, 7850 and 7870, closer to 7870. Other cards within this mid-range uh, bracket include the 650 Ti, the 660 Ti, and uh, possibly the 670 as well. Um, note that this is, when you're going up the tier of cars, this is the first car that will support SLI. The 650 Ti, just one below that, will not support SLI. It does not have an SLI uh, connector. So this only has one SLI connector, allowing you to only set up two of these cards in SLI. If you go up, uh, up the ladder in the NVIDIA's uh, range of cards, I believe starting with the 670, you could probably go... Um, could have three cards running the triple SLI, etc. Um, overall, it's a very low power uh, graphics card. Uh, only requires one six pin connector, six pin PCI Express connector from your power supply, which is pretty good. Uh, normally, uh, older cards have used uh, two six pin connectors, obviously, due to uh, the older uh, transistor lithography and drawing out more power. So, um, the power target here for NVIDIA is 115 watts. The maximum amount of power draw for this is probably 140 watts. And um, idle, idle powers are within the fairly, fairly low wattages, probably like in the double digits. Um, overall, this is a very uh, nice card. Um, it handles most games perfectly. Battlefield 3 max settings flawlessly close to uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, give or take uh, 10 to 15 frames per second depending on the scene especially multiplayer Starcraft again same thing 60 frames per second even higher in some scenes you know depending on uh, how many uh, NPCs you have around the field etc um, other, other games such as uh, Crisis 3 um, it's only able to handle it close to a medium to high settings without any noticeable drop in frame rate you know like every every gamer um, looks for like a frame rate above 60 frames per second for those of you who are enthusiasts you know we obviously push for higher frame rates everything above 60 etc so um, again um, it, it handles most games perfectly and um, it's going to be doing a quick unboxing let's open it up see what's inside um, this Set, this is the overclocked edition from ASUS. I got this off of Newegg uh, just very recently from the sale they had. This was for $169.99 after mail and rebate, uh, $20 mail and rebate. So right now I paid $189.99 for this. Um, currently live in New York, uh, no tax on Newegg and plus free shipping, which is pretty good. Uh, this card usually sells for um, $220, $230 around. So it's a pretty good price, you know, for the card. Um, the GTX uh, 650 Ti sells for around that much, $169.99, if you're going to go for like uh, a pricier version of the car, depending on your manufacturer. Now, this stuff says uh, overclocked edition, OC, but um, it's just another gimmick. It's just only at the core clock speed is only around 30 megahertz faster than the reference NVIDIA speed and the memory clock around 50 megahertz, which is nothing. I mean, uh, if you want to really overclock it, I mean, uh, you could use uh, the separate NVIDIA utility to push this higher, and um, I've seen um, I've seen benchmarks of the card achieving a performances close to the GTX 670 once fully overclocked. But then again, you run the risk of um, you know too much heat, frying out your GPU, etc. Um, you also have to keep an EK monitoring the voltages and the currents as well. So anyway. Uh, Let's get this unbox. Enough of me yapping about. Uh, now I had I got in this before. Packaging is in a fairly nice box. Um, let me just take it out for you. Um, over here you have uh, ASUS branding right here. 
pretty nice packaging. Open it up. We have uh, the graphics card right here. Now, Reese's claims uh, that they made the car 20% cooler and quieter than the NVIDIA reference cars, and that they're using uh, the so called uh, super alloy power digi voltage regulator module, the VRM, etc., for um, increasing the power efficiency and decreasing the noise. Um, again, it's just marketing from, you know, the manufacturers. Like everybody, you know, most people in the Git PC world tout uh, MSI's uh, 660, the Twin Frozer editions, uh, as being like one of the top end cards, which is true to an extent. But then again, uh, you have to see, you know, what's what's really up with these cards. Uh, just pull this off right here. Again, packaging is pretty nice um, compared to other brands that I had. Um, notably Zotac, which I hate. Um, but overall, pretty nice build quality, etc. Um, so let's, let me get you guys a closer look. So you have two fans over here over the heat spreader, along with uh, cooling pipes over here for um, to pretty much uh, get the pretty much distribute the heat flow and get them out via the fans. Um, over here, you have your six-pin uh, PCI Express power connector. And over here you have a cover, uh, again, which is really nice, you know, it prevents um, the connectors from, um, pause, I saying um too many times, from uh, getting, uh, whatever, rusted, uh, corroded, corroded is the word, uh, corroded from over time. So it's better to have these on if you're not using SLI. Um, on the bottom you have, again, the PCI Express. Um, the GTX 600 series is the first to use PCI Express 3.0. Um, note that PCI Express 3.0 um, supports larger data transfer compared to PCI Express 2.0. I believe roughly twice the amount. I believe it's 32 gigabytes or gigabits. I'm not too sure. Probably gigabytes. Gigabits sounds too small um, per second. Uh, also, I believe uh, the only chips that support this are the Intel Ivy bit chips that so fully support PCI Express 3.0. So Sandy Bridge chi chips, anybody of you have Sandy Bridge MOBOs, etc., do not support PCI Express 3.0. You'll be running this card with PCI Express 2.0 via Sandy Bridge. But I've seen some uh, benchmarks comparing um, PCI Express 2.0 and 3.0. There's not much of a difference, um, considering I believe it's pretty immature right now. This is the format. And uh, let me just t t take this off. You see the PCB right here. Uh, it's a black, nice black PCB. Very few uh, manufacturers actually make a black PCB uh, for graphics cards. I believe XF, XFX does it. I mean, it depends on their branding. You know, they try to color coordinate everything. ASUS is typically red um, for the graphics cards, blue for the entry level mobiles, etc., and red for um, the extremist boards, uh, Republican gamers. So um, on the side over here, you have. Um, you have your uh, display port over here, one HDMI, and you have two DVI ports. Um, this card also supports NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA's 3D vision technology, so any of you guys that have a 3D uh, computer display or a 3D TV, um, you could run the card via 3D or no problems, just provided that you get um, 3D glasses and like I said before, a 3D compliant monitor as well. Um, that's about it. Um, in terms of your power supply, you also have to have like, you know, like obviously you have to have meet the power requirements to run the card, as well, which shouldn't be a problem. Most cards, you know, 300, 400 watts should be enough for this card, depending on uh, what other accessories you have plugged in to your motherboard. And if you're going to go SLI, um, probably like 500 minimum, um, better to stick with 600 or 700. And that's about it. That's my unboxing of the ASUS GTX 660, the so-called overclocked edition. And um, comment, subscribe. I'm going to have more videos up later. And I'll probably have a video up maybe uh, a little bit later of uh, the cards running in SLI. Stay tuned. Comment, subscribe.